Hello, everyone. Like Mr. Hall said, my name is Emily. For those of you who don't know me well, or at all for that matter, there is one thing you must know about me. I love to read. I'm, I average about 10 to 14 books checked out from my local library at all times, and I bring at least one book with me to school every day. However, I'm not the kind of person who restricts herself to one genre of books. I'll read every type of fiction, from realistic to historical to fantasy to action to conspiracy to ghost to murder mystery to bestseller. Some may think of it as an obsession. I like to think of it as a healthy practice. From books, I can escape my world and dive into the mysterious disappearance of a teenage girl or to the unconventional death of Sam Kingston or to where a land where love is forbidden or where faction comes before blood, even if your family is right. Books can distract me from when my life gets chaotic and stressful, entertain me when it gets boring, or teach me lessons that would have taken longer to learn in real life. Once again, my name is Emily, and I'm here to tell you about the lessons that I've learned from the books that I've loved. One of my absolute favorite books as a child was Mama, Do You Love Me? by Barbara N. Juice, a story about an Eskimo child who was curious about how strong her mother's love was for her. This book made me realize very early on in my life that my mother and everyone else's mothers love their children irrevocably and unconditionally. Moms will always be there for their kids and will support them until the end. As proven in Harry Potter, a mother's love is even stronger than death itself. Olivia Saves a Circus by Ian Falconer is a story about an imaginative pig named Olivia who is called on in class to share what she did for her vacation. She makes up a wild tale about how when she went to the circus, the circus people were all out, with, out sick with ear infections, so she ran the show. The pig ends up getting reprimanded for her teacher for lying. Olivia taught me that while it's not okay to lie, but um, adding a little extra something to a story never hurt anyone. Lori Hulse Anderson has been one of my favorite authors since I read her book, Winter Girls. It's about two best friends, both with eating disorders. The girls have a contest of who can get the skinniest, who can weigh zero pounds first. Then, one of the girls dies. This haunting book taught me that sometimes friendships can be harmful and toxic, and it is best to get out of them when you start hurting yourself or others. Lori Hall Sanderson wrote another favorite book of mine called Speak. In the book, a girl attends a party and gets assaulted. She calls the cops to inform them about the party, but doesn't have the guts to tell her story. After that, everyone hates her for spoiling their party, and so she stays quiet and doesn't speak. One of my friends was going through something similar. The person wasn't being assaulted, but they were hurting themselves. When they told me, I couldn't keep quiet. This had to stop. So I told someone what was going on. At first, my friend was furious with me, but now they're doing much better, and I'm glad I knew what to do thanks to speak. My other favorite author is Lauren Oliver, who wrote the Delirium Trilogy and my second favorite book ever, Before I Fall. The story focuses on it girl Sam Kingston, who has it all in the eyes of her peers. Then, just as her world seems so perfect, she dies. Sam wakes up the next morning, but it isn't the next morning. It's February 12th, all over again. And again, and again, and again. Reliving the last day of her life over and over makes her realize the kind of person she was when she climbed to the top of the social ladder. So, Sam fixes all of her mistakes with a sacrifice that ends all of the madness. Sam taught me that while you think you may be a nice person and that everyone loves you, they don't. They remember that day you were in a bad mood and snapped at them, or that thing that you said behind their backs that they heard about later. Sam taught me not to keep secrets and to think about how others feel before I go and say something. Divergent is one of the best dystopian society novels ever. It's narrated by Beatrice, later known as Tris Pryor, who must choose her future. Abnegation, selflessness, erudite, intelligence, amity, peace, candor, honesty, or dauntless, fearlessness. She chooses dauntless and ends up learning to fight, love, and be herself. Tris taught me that sometimes being selfish is good. Your future is your future, and it's up to you to choose your path. Being hard is scary because you're afraid of others shooting you down for thinking outside of the box, but you shouldn't let your parents, siblings, or friends tell you who to be or what to do. You are who you are, and you can't let anyone take that away from you. As Dr. Seuss once wisely put it, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Pretty Little Liars by Sarah Shepard is just the first book in an action-packed mystery series for young adults. It focuses on the mysterious disappearance and death of Queen Bee Alison De Laurentiis. Three years after her disappearance, her body is found, 
and her four best friends start receiving anonymous text messages from someone known as A about scandalous secrets that only Allie knew. The book taught me lots of things I shouldn't, under any circumstances, ever do. So I've, um, by combining all the lessons, I've realized that something that becomes very obvious from the book, but that the four main characters fail to realize. Don't do something you do not want the whole world to find out about. I'm sure most, if not all of you, have heard of The Hunger Games. Wall is a dramatic dystopian society novel about a sick game of children fighting to the death and a special hunter who's just trying to survive. The best-selling novel also contains an applicable moral, which is exaggerated, exaggerated in the story, but vital nonetheless. I learned from Katniss's challenges and experiences in The Hunger Games that you must never take things for granted. Be thankful that you can get out of bed every morning, that you have an excellent education, that every day you have a full stomach, new clothes, friends, teachers, family, and so much more. The heroine's father died in a coal mining accident when she was just a kid. Katniss has to go out every day and literally hunt for her family's survival. Two things can make her happy, her sister Prim and her best friend Gail. Then she has to go out and kill a bunch of kids in order to save herself. Be thankful that you don't have to. A.C. Goggins' first published book is probably my favorite book ever. Scarlet is a fairy tale twist on Robin Hood, his band of male thieves, and oh, one more thing, his female master thief that he may just be falling in love with. But Robin and Scarlet have mouths to, to feed, a thief catcher to outwit, and a band to keep intact. Their relationship seems to be the least of their worries. And with Scarlet keeping secrets, it seems as if there will be no Robin and Scar, just Robin and Scar. Scarlet taught me that no matter how much you think you're protecting yourself by shutting others out, there are some people who have earned your trust and you need to trust them. I thought I learned that when I read this book, but it took reality to make it register. I lost my best friend by shutting her out. Though we seem to have made up and we're friends again, it still isn't quite the same. I doubt it will ever be again. If you're to take anything away from this chapel, take away this lesson. Don't shut your closest friends and family members out. You'll find yourself completely alone. Now I'd like to tell you about Delirium, one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites. It was written by Lauren Oliver, one of my favorite authors who also wrote the book previously mentioned Before I Fall. The story is set in a dystopian society in future America where at the age of 16, you are given a procedure to take away a more Deliria nervosa, or, as we know it, love. The heroine of the story falls in love before her procedure, and that leads to two more books filled with love, hate, betrayal, sacrifice, and rebellion. The story of passion taught me that you can't let people make or tell you what to think, and that you must never give up on love. For though the concept, for though it may seem unpredictable at times, the concept itself is always consistent and real. Finally, my favorite book as a child, If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff. In this book, a pig wanders up to a house and crawls into the window. There, he is fed pancakes, but he wants syrup with them. The syrup makes him sticky, so he wants a bubble bath. But when he takes a bubble bath, of course, he would want a rubber duck to play with. The duck will remind him of the farm where his family lives, so he will search for his human friend's suitcase so they can go on a trip to visit the farm. The story continues on and on with the pig getting distracted over and over and over again. Finally, the pig ends up eating pancakes in the kitchen again. I learned one of the most important lessons ever from this book. Get your priorities in order, pancakes come first. <laughs> Many of these books taught me lessons in childhood that would normally have taken years to learn. The lessons helped me save a friend, somewhat fix a friendship, and overall how to be a better person. These books made me laugh and cry, gave me nightmares and daydreams. They are my friends, advisors, teachers, entertainers, and tiny bits and pieces of my identity. Books help shape and teach the world, and I hope I've helped in their mission by teaching you something today. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.